Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Bengal of oh, the Green Room Podcast. <laughs> I'm Matthew Bruni, and joining me once again is Colin Mitchell. Wow, uh, Colin, it's Sunday night. Um, it's been a been a rough week. Been a rough week um, for North Texas fans in general, but uh, we maintained hope. I think after the Boise State game a little bit, even though I was distraught. Um, and then Sunday afternoon, Sunday, really Sunday morning, 10 30 tip, uh, central time, it kind of flipped and mm-hmm. against Boise, I was able to watch the full game. You had to watch like pieces of it this time against Fordham. I was not able to watch the full game. I watched pieces of it. Uh, I did watch at the end, but, um, you watched the full game. And so now yeah. you're distraught. So now we are both distraught, equally distraught, equally distraught. Um, but yeah, where, where do you want to start? Man, I, I guess we can just run through the game real quick. Uh, I mean, Fordham, we talked about it. This is kind of, they weren't really a pushover team, but they weren't a team that North Texas should lose to. Uh, I don't remember the exact Ken Palm number we, I looked at earlier. You sent it to me. Uh, I think they were 202 coming into the mm-hmm. game. Yep. Um, so that's really bad that they lost to a team that's 202. Townsend, uh, I believe was ranked higher than that whenever yep. they played them, uh, a couple of weeks ago um first half they come out they're dominant defensively they're insane six blocks three steals uh aaron scott's otherworldly on defense um ruben's not really having anything fall but he he's leading the offense fine getting assists not turning the ball over jason edwards is hot from three they're up 12 into the half you come out of the half feeling really good and then all of a sudden fordham goes on a 10-0 run in like a minute and 50 seconds and you're like okay this sucks and North Texas is not able to, I guess, recover from that. It's yeah. like when that 10 run happened, they lost any, for me, like poise. Like they just lost it. I mean, Ruben had four turnovers. Jason Edwards had two careless turnovers. Um, and on top of Ruben having those turnovers, he couldn't hit a shot to save his life. I mean, I think he ended yeah. two of, it was two or three of like 12 three, or three of six. He ended the game three of 16. Three of 16. Okay. Yeah. So there you go. It's three of 16. And when you have that, you're not going to win a whole lot of games. And not only that, you only took three threes in the second half. So, I mean, you, you, you score 18 uh, paint points in the first half. You get 14 in the second half. Difference is, though, you're taking a lot harder shots with middies and floaters and then not even attempting really any threes and making any threes. Um, and then you lose on a uh, – probably the worst way I've ever seen North Texas <laughs> lose a game is on a dunk buzzer beater that leaves on the dude's hands play. on a broken play. <laughs> An absolute yeah. broken play. Like they they got the double. T- I don't know what Fordham was doing. Dribble to the baseline. It was it was it was like they ran that same exact play that uh, yeah. Ruben helped Ruben uh, forced a turnover with earlier. Yeah, did you dribble to the baseline and North Texas was there doubles it, and yep. then just the ball fumbles right to a big and he puts it in the basket. Um, I I don't I mean I don't feel bad for North Texas at all because you didn't do anything to deserve to win this, this basketball game. Right. You um, get away with it if they don't make that dunk. Yeah. You get away with it. Um, you played absolutely horrible in the second half and individually you could go across the board. Uh, I think there's a lot of players that didn't, didn't play very well. I, I mean, Jason Edwards, 19 points, you know, I think he was, a lot of his work was done in the first half, like you mentioned. Aaron Scott, uh, you know, ten points on five of eleven shooting. We still want him. We want him to do even more. Well, the thing with Aaron too is like, I'm not trying to knock Aaron because he's obviously a fantastic player, but if if you keep going to this this post up midi or turnaround mid range shot and it's not falling, you can't. I don't think you can keep going to it because I haven't really seen it fall. Okay, in a it, few games. Yeah, it's his. The problem, his problem is similar to Ruben's problem, is similar to everybody on this team's problem, except for um, Jason Edwards. Jason Edwards is the only player on this team that can take somebody off the bounce right now. And that that's the problem is that they have no juice to get to the basket or get to the free throw line. I mean, uh, Edwards had eight free throws. The rest of the team had three, and they were all from Robert Allen. Nobody else had a free throw attempt. Yeah, like they, you have to be able to do something off the dribble here. That's not just backing somebody down for ten dribbles, Aaron, like Aaron does, or you know the post ups they they get from Mulai or or at Robert. Um, 
that you, you need something a little bit more. And they haven't been able to generate that off of ball screens, off really anything. And I, you know, old North Texas teams would supplement that, like I said, with Zachary Simmons, um, Abu, maybe JV on uh, getting into the paint. But like those paint touches aren't there for this offense. So it's just incredibly inconsistent. That's what makes Jason Edwards so valuable. Yeah. Well, and, and two, in that first half, they got a lot of touches in the paint that I thought were good yeah. looks, but they didn't convert a lot of the ones that I thought they should have. I mean, they shot 50% in the first half. 18 That's the other thing. Paint points, we've, like talked I said. About, we've talked about that a lot this year. Yeah, like, like I was like, oh, they're in the paint. Like, Mulaya opened up with two back-to-back yeah, coach shots, and you're like, okay, cool. They're converting some layups. They're getting some good shots, but then it's like you have, like, an opportunity where you're like, okay, that's not, like, a wide-open layup, but that's something you should make yeah, and not just throw away. Mm -hmm. And it's like, there's a lot of those. And in the second half, when you're not getting all those just open shots in the paint, like you did in the first half, it's, it just goes the other way. Mm -hmm. And, and like, well, I can't remember exactly what it was, but I, I, it was like a lot of the time, especially with Ruben, you know, they run the screen, pick and roll, and he goes up with that floater. And that's, that's really all they have outside of a post up in the paint yeah. to me, like watching. And I didn't rewatch the game or anything, but that's just what it feels like there's i got on bugs after the boise state game because he went over four played it better three of three of six so um good to see that but then cj nolan 16 minutes zero points oh of two matthew stone 14 minutes zero points O of O. let's not let's not also i mean uh cj nolan also with four turnovers as well yeah jeez and yeah, at least Stone didn't have a turnover. Yeah, well, and, yeah. and then the long when we, when we talk about big picture, not this game, I do want to talk about different different lineups and players because it is anytime this team gets sped up, there's no like Ruben's the steady hand, right? But if he's not steady, like in the pick and roll today when they got sped up and, and Fordham's going on that run, it was like they run the pick and roll and he threw it into the guy's foot. I don't know if you saw that turnover. Yeah. I mean, a couple of times he had a bunch of throwaways, and then Jason Edwards gets two downhill, gets a little out of control, throws a ball out of bounds. And obviously, you have to put the ball in his hands. But this team, whenever they face adversity, I feel like they aren't able to slow it down. I feel like they want to race with the other team, which which works if you're making shots. But if you're not making shots, you got to slow it down. Yeah, I um, I, I think I was wrong about this team. And you know, there's a lot of season left, so I don't want to speak in definitive statements. Right. But right now we're staring down the barrel of a five and five start. You have a road game at Mississippi State um, on on Sunday, a week from today, and you, if you lose that game, you're five and five. With basically your only, I mean, your only good win, I'd say, over Northern Iowa. Towson's also top two hundred win, but like, sure, five and five as conference play approaches, like. I don't want to say I was wrong, but I mean, offensively coming into the year, we thought this was going to be one of the best offensive teams North Texas has had. But that was strictly off of the talent that it's had, right. that the potential, right? And that was also off of Aaron Scott taking a bigger step forward, um, you know, Ruben being more efficient than, than what he's been, um, you know, CJ Nolan, uh, John Bugs, like all these guys haven't quite lived up to what we've wanted them to do offensively, except for Jason Edwards. And I mean, so yeah, we're, we're looking at five and five start potentially if you lose to Mississippi state and you have an offense that ranks 166 in the country right now. Yeah. Like that's not going to get it done in the American. And so now we've said it before. It's like, all right, after the, after FAU and Memphis, I think it's a pretty open race for who's third in, in the conference. I still think that's true. SMU. I've watched a ton of SMU games because I do the Dave Campbell's podcast. SMU is really tough. Do I think they're better than North Texas? I don't know, but I don't love either team right now. Like neither yeah. team is jumping off the beach. Like, wow, that's a that's a team that really deserves like an NIT berth or something like that, or could maybe make a run at this thing. Like, I don't look at that. Um, Tulane just got blown out by Mississippi State by 30, but they beat Fordham by eight. So it's again, you go down the list of teams and you're like, none of these teams overwhelm you, but at the same time, North Texas has done nothing to really earn our trust, um, especially, which we can get to that another point, is especially late in games. 
Like the inability yeah. to close games is is staggering right now. I mean, let me, uh, we'll, let me read off some stats here. Go ahead. Um, so we'll go. We'll start with you and I, and we'll go. We'll go up to today. Yeah. So against you and I, they obviously won that game. We thought it was a really big win. Aaron Scott had a huge game. Yep. Their last field goal, not free throw, field goal made in regulation was it with six minutes and thirty three seconds left in that game. Six minutes and thirty three seconds. They got uh, four three throws to tie that game up to force overtime, and then in overtime. They didn't score a field goal for the last three minutes and twenty one seconds, and then you went on free throws. Which and they should you know, have lost that game. Which winning on free throws is fine if there looks at the basket and not you're not you're not drawing you know bonus free throws or whatever, and and that's how they won that game. But anyway, I digress. Uh, St. John's, your last field goals with three ten in the game. You lose on field three throws fifty three fifty two. They were up in that game. You have this exact time for that, but they were up mm-hmm. one with. A couple minutes to go yep. lsu which is looking worse and worse and worse as the season goes on uh you leave 57 56 with four minutes and 31 seconds in the game you let lsu score five of their last seven and you shoot one of your last 10 you lose that game 66 62 boise state we talked about this last podcast you're up 215 left you let boise go on 11 0 run in a minute 49 you end shooting one of your last eight fordham i'm just gonna go first half second half you shoot 14 to 30 in the first half, five of 10 from three. You only have four, four fouls, four turnovers in the second half. You're nine to 30. You're 0 of three from three. You have 12 fouls and you have nine turnovers. And that's not, and and I, I feel like this isn't a first half, second half thing really for North Texas. Fordham, I think, is the starkest of, of every game they played this season. Yeah. But I was texting you earlier. This team's really good for the first 25 to 30 minutes. Mm-hmm. They can dominate teams for the first 25 to 30 minutes. And then it just falls off. And I don't know exactly what that is because watching the game, it's it's almost like it comes out of nowhere. Like, like yeah. today against Fordham, I didn't think Fordham had it in go on a 10 run against North Texas. I was going to tweet at halftime like, oh, this 12-point lead for North Texas is like a 24-point lead. And then Fordham just goes off and scores 10 points in less than two minutes. And defensively, I think this team is good. I think a lot of what kills them is, again, you have a team that makes that cuts it, that doesn't cut it close goes on a small run we'll say 6-0 right you hit they hit two tough threes and then they try to run and then that's when the turnover starts to come and then it's like okay now we got to do something and they just stay sped up not not just in terms of pace but also i think just mentally they're just sped up and i don't necessarily know how to fix that i mean you you are more of the x's and o's guys so you maybe you see something different for me i just feel like this team gets too sped up and doesn't have a go-to guy outside of jason edwards that can make something happen and even then when you give the ball to jason edwards and he's a great scorer he had two turnovers when he had the ball in his hands driving the basket. Yeah, and he had a turnover against Boise late in that game. I mean, yeah. which was kind of un- unfortunate because he caught the ball in the corner. But, like, um, they're 314th in the country in assist rate right now. And when you watch it, it does feel that – it feels – I don't want to say stagnant, but it feels like they're not moving a defense. I don't know. They're not that, – that's, that's, that's what, kind of my point of, like, when I, when I said they don't have penetration to get in the paint, it wasn't like they're not getting in the paint. It's that they're not making, they're not getting to the paint. They're not getting to the paint to make the defense uncomfortable in that way to where they're able to like kick out the shooters or they're right. able to, you know, throw it up, a, throw up a lob off of help or something like that. It feels like when they get in the paint, they're shooting it, which is cool, but they're not getting looks off of those touches. And you're 314th in, in the country in assist rate. It's not like a stark drop off. Last year they were 204th. Year before 223. Year before 162. Year before 229. So they they've never been like great, but like 314th is a pretty stark of like, all right, we're not. You're not moving the ball at a high rate, and you're not getting like assisted baskets. Yeah, and to your point, I don't think it comes necessarily on perimeter shots, right? I feel like they swing the ball fine, you know, whatever they do handoffs. I think it comes when they, when they, when they want to get a paint touch, they always revert to, all right, let's throw it to Aaron. He's in a post up. Let's throw it to Mulai. He's in a post up, whoever, whoever. And then, like you said, that doesn't, you're just, you're not showing the defense anything. You're just like, okay, well, this guy will post up. If he doesn't make the shot, he won't. And North Texas doesn't really have, Outside of Aaron, a guy that can score inside well. I'm trying to think how big of a deal it is that we we've hit on this a lot. The five position, like how big of a deal is it that you go from Zach and Abu to now Allen slash Sissoko? Because Allen right now is shooting 47 percent from two, 15 of 32. Um, I don't expect Allen to be the guy that you want to post up. 
No, no, no. I'm not saying post. Yeah. I'm just mean in general being in general. Okay. A, a guy that either has some sort of presence here, like the touch, like Zach Simmons was shooting 70 percent almost high like percentage, career, like 65 yeah. percent. Some crazy. crazy. Um, Sissoko is 16 of 26, which is cool. Um, in eight games, but again, so Sissoko shooting three times games. Allen shooting four times a game, and Allen shooting 47 percent. So it's like. Does that like does is that a significant drop off? Is that where the because I'm trying to find where the difference is from years past to this year because it doesn't feel like I'm watching a totally different team offensively, but this is a pretty significant drop off on the offensive side of the ball. And I understand Tyler Perry's not on this team. I understand. Yeah, I understand. Um, Javion Hamlet and James Reese and Mo Gibson go all the way back. Like none of those guys are on this team. But it feels like there should be more offensive firepower than what they have right now. And I'm wondering if the five position is just where they've taken a step back significantly. I don't even know if it's just the five position, though. I feel like no one can score on the inside. I feel like anytime this team goes up for a layup, it's blocked. It's a brick. I mean, it's it's not just with the bigs. Now, the bigs are a big part because obviously Mulai, I think, just taking a step back to what he he's obviously taking a step back from what he was in the NIT and is kind of reverted to the Mulai we saw at the beginning of last year. But I but I think everyone has kind of I mean, CJ Nolan was 0-2. I, mean, I think both his looks were, were inside. Last year, Abu had one of the highest like usage rates on the team. Third highest usage rate yeah. on last year's team. Uh, shot 49%, took about nine, nine shots per game or so. Um, two years ago, similar thing. Abu was second in usage rates behind Thomas Bell. Again, took, I don't even know what this is, about eight, nine shots per game, 49%. And I'm sure if you go to Zachary Simmons, uh, yeah, second on the team usage percentage, he was shooting 65.3% on however many, let's say eight, seven, eight shots per game. So again, it's like, I think that's something that's is different about this team is they've reliant all they're reliant a lot more on Edwards and Ruben and Aaron than previous years teams have been. For sure, but I feel like that's where we thought this team should have taken a step. And yeah, it hasn't exactly. And I mean, and to your point about Zach too, it's not just, you know, field goal percentage. I mean, he, he also had high assist numbers because he, yeah. he was able to see the floor so well from the post. So uh, I think it's, it's really come down to guards for me have been disappointing um, just in terms of the looks that I feel like they should be converting. I mean, I don't have any boxes out in front of me except for the Fordham one, but tonight three sixteen for, for Ruben isn't good. I mean, guards overall, John Buggs is your best right now at three to six. Uh, Jason Edwards is five of 10, but most of that was made in the first half. I mean, that's yeah. what you're looking at. Um, and, and for Nolan too, I feel like he needs to show me something different. Cause right now I feel like whenever he has the ball in his hands, nothing's, he's just a guy that has the ball in his hands to bring it up the floor yeah. at this point to me. Um, he has to be more aggressive. He has to be more aggressive. Just- um, cause otherwise it's like you just Matthew stone that handles the ball and then he ends up turning it over and you're hurting exactly. the team that way. So, exactly. um, I don't, I don't know how this team can fix it. I don't know if you have an idea of how this team can fix it. Um, I, th- I think this team can definitely get better. Like, I, oh, I, I think so too. I'm not hitting the panic button. I want to make that clear. I'm not hitting the panic button. Well, I'm not hitting the panic button because my expectation this year is, or my goal this year is to finish top three in the American. And I still think that is a very viable, like there is a viable path to do that if this team takes steps forward. But there's also now a viable path to where they finish like sixth. Yeah, where they take a step backwards. Yeah, where they finished six now, like that wouldn't like sh- like at this point, like I said, they could be five and five. F- si- finishing six is very much on the table right now. So yeah. I, we haven't seen this team beat a good team besides Northern Iowa, and they almost lost that game. So now, all right, you have to play to start conference play Wichita 109th, Tulane 104 as your first two games. How do I know you're not going to lose both those games? Mm-hmm. Off rip, like it's just yeah, it's it's. We'll see. We'll how much? See. How much? How much? Uh, blame do you put on Hodge right now? I I don't. Um, I think Hodge has done exactly what I've expected him to do. Where the defense is thirty third in the country. Yeah. The hardest part for him, we knew, was going to be figuring out the offense with all these new pieces and losing Tyler Perry and losing. I agree. Drew. So I nothing's surprised me. We wish, and I don't think. I definitely don't think the late game struggles are specifically on him. Like I'm not, you know, saying he doesn't have any blame on them, but um, at a certain point, in a lot of these games, we've seen te- them have some pretty damn good looks. 
a and, lot of good looks. I mean, LSU that, especially. <laughs> I mean, the Boise State one, John Bugs has a corner three to take a two-point lead and just misses it. So, again, it's like at the end of the day, you got to put the ball in the basket. In some of these situations, you can't right. collapse the Boise State game, the can't collapse the LSU game. Like, you needed to be a little bit more poised and composed, and they just haven't been able to do it. So, um, you know, new team taking its lumps. It's happened. It happens almost every year in North Texas. I mean, two years ago, 2022, it started off two and three overall. Um, three years ago, it started off one and three, five and five, and then they go on to that's the Purdue year. They started off five and five as well. So, um, yeah, I'm I'm not completely panicked because I know what the expectations are for going for the year, but at the same time, that is a pretty as a fan like. This is what I want to say after the boys. I think I did say it after the boys game. Like, as it's happening, I'm going to be a fan and I'm going to be pissed off. Yeah. <laughs> because, like, don't lose that game. Don't yeah. lose the Boise State. And that's how it's supposed to be. That's how fans are supposed to be. So, yeah, right. fans should be upset that you lost to Fordham when you're winning the game. And they should be upset you lost to Boise State having a six point lead with two minutes left. Like, yeah, y'all, sh- we should be upset. Um, we are some of the most calm people. And we also did this at nine o'clock on Sunday after I took a nap. So that helped. I have also taken a nap. Yeah. Yeah. So we've taken naps. Yeah. Big nap guys here. But, um, <laughs> so that helps. But like, if you would have, if we recorded this as soon as the game ended. Oh yeah. I'm pissed. Yeah. I am pissed, but that's how it's supposed to be. Right. This is North yeah. Texas. If we want to be a basketball school. We have to win these games. <laughs> we, we, should, we have to have fans cool. that care. That's the yeah. biggest thing is you have to have fans that care. There cannot be apathy here. So be upset, you know, take the Twitter, take to the streets, be upset. But um, once this thing starts to turn on the corner, which I'm, I, again, I think that this will turn the corner at some point, uh, maybe not all the way, but it'll get there. Then we show back up and it's like, all right, boom. Now they're caring again in a positive direction. So um, yeah. It's a, I mean, it's a bad loss, frustrating loss, but we move. Uh, basketball, next basketball game is December seventeenth at Mississippi State. Um, I think it's like a semi-neutral game, so we'll see. But um, probably do a, f- a football podcast before that as well. Um, they're starting to pick up some players, Colin. I don't know if you I heard. I saw that. I saw the three puzzle pieces today. Starting to get some puzzle pieces. Look at my hand. You see that? Oh my god! Did I not show you this? You didn't show me that it bruised like that, Jesus! Dude, I was playing basketball. Mm-hmm. I have so many bruises and scratches from basketball, and I had gotten a steal to possession before, so I was really feeling good. And next possession, this dude comes up, like catches the ball here, and I try coming from behind, like tapping it out. Yeah, I miss. <laughs> I go for it, and like let's say this is his right arm. I go for it, and my my. That just goes right into his elbow, just mm. full speed, bah! and mm. I just collapsed to the floor. Collapsed, <laughs> but I kept ah! playing. But I kept playing. I think I texted you this. I hit like two threes that game. Yeah, and then that. you missed after. Oh, you, you told me you missed after yeah. that. Well, I hit two threes after this, and then I missed two more the next two. So it's like oh, okay, I came okay. back down to earth. Adrenaline was going that game, but mm. yeah, this yeah, was big game, quite painful. It still hurt? No, not really. You got full full movement of your extremities. Really, just what if I couldn't like move my thumb? <laughs> right. <Pick laughs> that I'm not to amputate it. You can't move your thumb. Should be numb. A nub. <laughs> That'd be crazy. <laughs> Colin, how you how you liking the hair? Uh, it's growing a lot faster than I thought. Like it's not prickly anymore. It's like it feels like like hair. it feels like it's it's gotten past the prickly state. Um. I mean, I did notice I have is on this side. No, it's on, the other no, side. on this side. The dent. Yeah, right there. It's yeah. like no hair grows right there. Oh. So I don't know what happened when I was younger. I don't know if I fell and my mom you just didn't dropped. tell me something. I don't know. Colin got dropped. I have a scar right here because uh, I was jumping on my bed. It was a pirate ship bed. I had like a wheel and I fell on it and my head cracked open. It's crazy. So maybe that has something to do with it. I don't know. It explains a lot. Mm-hmm. Thanks a lot. All right. Um, 
but yeah, that's all we got for y'all today. We'll be back with football podcast sometime in uh, this week, and we will talk to y'all later. Subscribe, like, comment, all that good stuff. Follow us on Twitter, Green Room UNT. Um, and yeah, we will be back later.